Hello, welcome back out to the shop. Um, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, I shot some footage of taking apart the three jaw chuck from the Sydney lathe um, a week and a half or so ago, and the audio wasn't working. So I was all set to try out that new um, 20 millimeter lens for the DSLR, but using the DSLR, I can't see the audio meter. Um, the, the camera that I have, the T4i, you have to kind of look at it through the viewfinder and when you hook it where you can see the confidence monitor, it doesn't show the audio meter like this um, Canon camcorder does. So I know my audio is working here it's because I can see the audio meter moving. Well, I shot, I don't know, a few hours of taking, taking the three jaw part and, um, you know, inspecting it, looking at it, getting it in the parts washer, um, getting some of the parts out and um, putting them in an evaporous because they were, they didn't need to be degrees. They just needed to have some surface rust taken out of them. But no audio means, you know, the footage is about useless. So we went back to the camcorder and um, I know this audio is going to work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to um, put back the, uh, put together the three jaw chuck, if it's good to come out of the parts washer. It's been in there for about, oh, almost a week. And um, I haven't even looked at it yet. So it might not need to come out yet, but um, I'm fairly certain the Purple Powers did its thing. So we took all the little parts and that had surface rust on them and we um, just uh, took them out of the Purple Power, I'm, excuse me, took them out of the uh, um, Evaporust, golly. Took them out of the evaporust and um, just sprayed them down with WD-40. And these parts look really, really good. And it, it still makes me wonder, you know, how much was this lathe used? I mean, it has score marks on the ways and all that. But, um, you know, this, this lathe chuck, and I'll get you some closer pictures of it. Um, maybe they took off a chuck and just stuck this one on it. I don't know. I mean, it looks like it was married to it for quite a while. But um, these jaws do not show anywhere. I mean, not a bit. I looked up the inside and the outside jaws. And um, I'll get you some closer shots, but it's amazing how this looks. So um, I, I, I just don't, I don't understand. But um, I mean, fortunate for me, I reckon. So anyway, so let me get you a closer shot of this stuff and we'll take a look at the stuff that's in the par parts washer and hopefully that's ready to come out. So um, I think that's it. Let's get started. All right, so I moved this in closer so you can get a better view of this. And hopefully, hopefully, um, this is a good angle to see this thing come out of. Um, the other thing I can do is put you over here and then I have to move some lights and stuff. So let's try this. If not, take two. So my usual scum that's been on top of the um, Purple Powers showed up again. So we'll have to put some more pigs in here and, and get that stuff took up. But the first thing we're going to do is I have a basket down here. Oh, no, no, no basket. This is a, this is the back plate or the scroll, scroll plate. Let me get that line over there. So you can see what the purple power did. It did its job. I mean, that is very, very well cleaned up. Now, looking at this, it looks like it may have some, a little bit of surface rust on it, too. So it may go. It may go into the uh, evaporust also for a, you know an overnight soak. It's just got a little bit. It's not much. You can see it right here and right in there. But it took you know that purple power takes that paint off and everything. It does a great job on cast. So let me get this apart and we'll get a rinse off and we'll move it over to that other part of the table so we can get a better look at it. So these choker chains, by the way, they're you know stainless choker chains for dogs work great for slinging up stuff that you need to sling up. So I just bought a few of them at the, you know, tractor supply, local tractor supply. All right, so now we've got to get the crane to get the big stuff out, so we'll move it over and we'll hook it up and hopefully not take out any lights while we're at it or the TV. I still need to put a stop block in. I end up replacing that TV before it's over, I can tell. Oh, look at here. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, it looks like it's no not been used. I still can't get over it. It's still got that sticky grease that was in it. But I mean, I mean, look at that. 
It did a it did a great job. Let me get a brush. It took all that surface um, grease and grum and grind that was on it. I mean, it just eat it right off. Like I said, if 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 you're in the need for a parts washer, I just highly recommend just build one out of out of uh, metal, fill it up with straight up purple power, and you're good to go. I do like the idea. I think I've seen those ones like Keith Rucker. No, not Keith Rucker. Who's got those ones? The Good of the Land, um, Justin, and I think Adam Booth has just got one of those heated ones from CRC. I really like it, but I needed one that had to have some, you know, put some big parts in it. There's no way that saddle was going into the, the ones they have. So I chose to build one, and um, this works great. I think the only other upgrade I may do, and I might look into building something that can heat this up. So, you know, some kind of water-to-water -water, um, transfer, something like that, because we're going to have a hot water heater working here anyway, so we could easily, you know, loop a line through it to heat this up. So that might, that might be the only other thing. And then we may look into insulating the box or doing something like that, but, you know, that's later down the road. So... Let's look at the back here. It's still got some of that sticky grease in there. So I don't know, you can't hardly see it, but I mean, this stuff is tacky, sticky, even in, after being in the purple power for a few days. So I can I not probably tell that's gonna take a little bit to get all that out. It might take something a little bit heavier than um, purple power to cut it. But I mean, there's no signs of wear, no missing teeth in the scrolls. Um, I think it's just seized up. I really, you know, it looks really, really good. But I know for sure that it's going to have to go into some evaporust. So we need to find a container that um, that this will fit in along with the scroll part of the, the back part of the truck and put that in there so we can uh, get all that surface rust off of there. You know, it probably won't take a couple hours, maybe an overnight soak. Um, so in the what I'm going to do is see if I can find a bucket that that'll fit into and the other part in there with a little bit of space and then we'll put what purple power we have in there and hopefully that gallon will be enough. Um, if not, we'll, we might put some little parts in there to kind of fill up the void spaces just because um, I only have a gallon. I have to run to town to get another one and I don't really want to run to town. So anyway, let me clean on this for a little bit and then uh or rinse it off and then i'll bring you back we'll put it over there on the table and have a closer look at it well as luck would have it i didn't find a container big enough that would fit this or the only other thing i have is really big and then it would take gallons of purple i mean keep on saying purple power evaporust so road trip we're going to head to the store pick up a, um, a container that this fits better in and then um, i'm gonna go ahead and pick up a couple more gallons of the evaporust while i'm at it and then we'll be back here, drop this stuff in, and we may start cleaning up some of these parts here. And, and as good as they look, I mean, we might just be doing some light deburring is all we're gonna do, because this stuff looks, I mean, it looks, it looks brand new. I mean, look at those cam locks. It's brand new looking. It's amazing, it's amazing. But either way, we're gonna run to our local um, Ace Hardware, or I'm sorry, True Value, and uh, keep on calling it Ace Hardware head up to our true value and um, pick up a container and some more um, evaporust. So we'll be back. All right, welcome back to the shop. Um, this is the next day. So I couldn't find any round tub that I really wanted, but I found a square tub. I did have to go buy some more purple power, I mean purple power, evaporust. Went and bought some more evaporust and everything's worked great. So the parts are in it and um, the uh, half of the scroll, scroll back of it didn't look so good. It didn't quite, I don't think, have enough fluid on it. It just barely covered it. So I'm letting that bottom part soak a little more. You can tell the part that evidently when the lathe was stored outside, you know, the orientation of the truck, the bottom half of it um, held some water. So you can tell that amongst the grease and the gunk that there was also some water in there and it caused a little bit of surface rust. But it got most of it off. I think we'll easily be able to save this. So I'm a, I'll pull this up so you can see the top part first. So this would be the part, you know, that didn't have any, um, that didn't have any water on it. And you can actually tell, man, that thing looks brand new. And, but you flip it over and you can see it has some surface pitting. So not bad, you know, and I think we'll easily be able to get all that out of there. And you can look at the backside of it. I mean, it turned out great. 
I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better than that. So um, I tried to zoom in, you know, as we go through this so you can see it, but I mean, it did an immaculate job. So I'm gonna lay it over here in the rinse off tank. And then the next thing, I'm gonna have to get the crane to get this part out because it is super duper heavy. So I just, again, use those choker chains. Try not to tear down my TV. And come on. Grab one of these rings here. Come on. And we'll let that hang for a minute and drain. But I mean, it looks really, really good. I mean, it looks really good. So, you know, the, the Evaporust kind of turns everything that darker color. So, um, or, it's, or, it's, or it's the oxidation or whatever the, the chemical, whatever's happening in the, it, I shouldn't, I keep on saying purple power. I'm here at the purple power tank, Evaporust. So, I'm gonna lightly brush it right quick while it's hanging over this. And we are definitely gonna build a tank. Um, I don't know exactly how I want to do it yet. I've toyed with the idea. Um, you know, you, you see those um, parts washers that people's build that has the tank that's on it on the bottom of it separate, and they heat it. And um, I heard that this evaporus and even the purple power works way better heated. So I'm, I've got a couple ideas in my mind, and I'll talk to Mike about it and see, you know, what he thinks. You know, we might even use one of those instant hot water heaters mounted on the wall. Um, just to circulate the fluid in so just to keep the stuff in a you know pretty warm environment I don't the way they're made you know it should easily handle this um this kind of stuff so if it does not you know just add a little bit of money so not that big a deal in the scheme of things I really like I said I really got to enjoy doing this stuff and to do this stuff you need this you need this stuff I mean you can't you can't go to Harbor Freight and buy a 200 gallon parts washer you know that stuff costs a lot of money to buy or you know you can invest a little bit of time and build something that really really looks good and works so the you know the next thing would be to definitely would definitely be to uh invest in some heaters on, on this stuff because you know right now well it's january but it's that weird january 70 degree day so <laughs> it's not a very typical day so anyway let me get where you can see this i'll raise it on up some more and man, it looks good. Ooh, it looks really, really good. So we're gonna leave it. I mean, I mean, it's well, it doesn't look that good on camera, but um, tr you gotta, you gotta trust me. It looks really good. So I need to get rid of that little bit of whatever that is on there from the from the uh, evaporust. But man, more than happy with this. I don't even know if I want to get it all nice and shiny now because I kind of like that look. We'll see, we'll see what happens as it progresses. I already decided all those little parts that I did, I'm gonna run them through the sandblaster one time and then run them on the 3M Scotch-Brite wheel just to clean them up really nice. And if I do that with that parts, it might not look the same on this one, so I might have to do it with this one too, so. But we'll see, we'll see, but. Uh, all right, that's enough of that. Let me let this drip dry and then I'll reset the camera up and move it over there closer to the uh, table so we can get a better shot of it. So we'll bring you right back. All right, so I went in the house and got some hot water. And we rinsed off all these parts, but you can look at that chuck, man. Oh, awesome looking. Very, very happy. So let's lower it down here. All right. So that's that. That's out of the way. That's what talking about that crane with that uh, um, auto retractor on. It's just set a little too strong. So get all these chains off of here. Put these back and take a look at this thing, which it looks really, really good. There is some like I'm gonna call them pecker marks for lack of a better word for like where they put the uh, the chuck in to work on it, but man, look at that. Compared to what it looked like, you know, yesterday, worlds of difference. So I still think, 
I still think I'm going to run it through the sandblaster and polish up that stuff and get it nice and shiny. I did one of the, uh, one of the parts. Let me grab a rag. I did one of the jaws. I don't remember which one, but you'll see it as soon as I get it out. Not that one. It has to be this one. I mean, look at that. That thing looks gorgeous. So that was uh, just sandblasting it and then running it on a wire wheel and then running it on the scotch bright wheel. Didn't take no time at all. So I do believe I'm going to do that because it looks, it looks pretty dang amazing, to tell you the truth. Still haven't found hardly any signs of wear. It's, it's crazy. So I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of uh, sandblasting and doing all that. So let me get these parts done, and then we'll bring you back and we'll put this thing together. So stay tuned. All right. So we got, I think we got the, the, the chuck cleaned up about as good as I can get it. Um, I took it on a wire brush. I really would like to get it on a 3D, I mean a 3M uh, scotch Bright wheel, but this thing weighs a ton, and I, I, I haven't got enough oomph to hold it up there while we're working on it. So I think this is as good as it's going to get. So I got everything I think I need. I need some gloves. Got my whey oil is what I'm going to use for the lubrication in it. Um, of course, my uh, anti-seize for all the threaded fasteners. Um, and I, I think we're ready to go. Let me grab some gloves. I'm going to zoom us in a little tighter and um, hopefully get this thing put together in no time. See you in a minute. All right, we got our two pieces and we have our mating marks right there. So we're going to do our best to get them lined up. There we go. And maybe a screw, if the screw lines up, we'll get a screw started in here. And it does, so I'm going to try and carefully lay this on the back without the backer plate falling out. Whew. Thing's a little heavy. Um, get our anti-seize ready. And a, really a little bit of this stuff goes a long way long way so matter of fact i'm gonna use a smaller brush just so i can work it a little better and all i do is i like i said just put it on the end of the thread you don't have to you know a little bit of this stuff goes all the way all you're trying to do is you know fill the voids in between the gaps in the screw threads so it really doesn't take a lot so i usually just put it on the end of the threads like that I'm not going to screw it down tight. Matter of fact, I wish I had my Dewalt. I might have to go get that. Matter of fact, let me go get it. I'll be right back. All right. We got my little 12 volt Dewalt here. I'm not going to go crazy with it. We'll cinch it all up after it's together. So we got that. Now we got to put in these. So let's go over here. So all those go in. Hey, so much for putting oil on everything, huh? <laughs> let's take that back out and start again. Come on. So we're going to, you know what, let's just squirt it on there. It's not going to matter. We need it excess, so I'm just going to put it in my hand and kind of swirl it around. We'll clean it up later. I definitely want it well oiled, though. So now they're all on there. I still got to flip it over. So let me get it to the edge of the table. Move all this stuff because it'll get crushed. <laughs> One falls out. So now we need... Now... Come on now. Stay there. Just a tad bit of anti-seize on that one. There we go. Straight screwdriver. All right, that one's locked in place. Moving on to the next. All right, so we got all those put in. And I'm going to clean it up a little bit. 
definitely not going to hurt. This oil is definitely not going to hurt it. So let's see how we did on the old spin test here. Well, that, <laughs> like I said, everything's got oil on it. Oh, yeah. Man, that's a world of difference right there. All right, so we're going to call that good. <laughs> We'll probably squirt some oil up in there just to uh, keep it, make sure everything stays lubricated really well. All righty. Man, I love it. Look at that. Man. Somebody's going to have to build themselves a T-handle, though, that's for sure. But that's, that's unreal there. That's nothing. Probably do it with my finger. Mm, not quite. Love it. All right. So now let's get these jaws in. So, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but right there, this one's number three. So let's find number one. Should be way over there. Oh, I didn't even know it. it had it stamped in it too. So there's number three stamped right there. Kind of hard to see, but for, I'm gonna assume, well, you can't assume, but if this is the, the uh, original Chuck, you know, it's 75 years old, which I kind of doubt it's original Chuck, but you never know. So, you know what? I'm going to put it back down on its back here. Oh. All right. Now, so this is number one, two, and three. So now we need the corresponding jaws for it. So that's number three. That goes here. Yeah, number three. That's number three. This is number one, and that's number, I'm going to make daggone sure, number two. All right, so we got that. So now, again, we're going to oil everything really, really good. And then we're going to oil everything really good here. So this is number one, it goes in, number two, hmm, a little tight, so don't know if there's something on here, or if there's a burr, so let me uh, f see if I can fix that, there's got to be a burr on probably the end of here or on the end of that jaw. And uh, let me fix that, and then I'll bring you right back. All right, so there was a small burr on the, on the end of that jaw right there. So we just knocked that thing down. We're going to recode it with some oil. And get it ready to go. All right, so how does this thing work? I believe we get number one going first, and the rest of them go in. <clears throat> That's the plan anyway. Let me get a longer extension so I don't have to drag this thing off the table. Be right back. All right, so we got number one, number two, number three in their respective places. So I'm gonna push on number one. So it's grabbing. And number two, it's grabbing. Now the goal is to get them all even. Of course, I reckon I could do a quick measurement, just double check, two and a quarter. Two and a quarter ish. And that one will be two and a quarter. So I think I got it right where it needs to go. So we'll just run it in. So this might take a little while. So I'll bring you right back. Or I could. Of course, this is probably going to be noisy. So I'm going to cut the noise off. But we're going to run it in with this. And it all lines up pretty on the hole, so we know we got it lined up. There you go. That didn't take any time at all. <laughs> plus, it's getting heavier every time we put something on it. So we, there we go. We got that part. Ooh, plus it, it brought about a whole bunch of dirty stuff. 
thought I had that thing clean. So we may take it back apart and um, um, just, uh, man, I, I wish I had a, like an ultrasonic cleaner, just something small that I could put all these parts in just to clean it. Of course, this is a big part, so I don't know if they, I don't want to spend the money on one, but we'll, we'll see what happens. If I don't like it, I'm going to take it back apart, so. But that worked really, really well. So I'm, I think, you know, probably off camera, I'm going to bring it back out, squirt oil back down in there and run it all the way in again. And it's just kind of turning that scroll and pushing all the in stuff to the inside. But we'll keep on with what we got now. So I know I marked these. Or I'm pretty sure I marked them. Not that it matters, but we're going to put them on too while we're here. So we got those on. Did I mark them? No. So that's with these. Long bolts. Shorts in the back, longs in the front. Man, now I don't know which one's which. There's long. There's a short. There's a long and a short. Long and a short. Of course, anti is on everything. Try to keep it off your fingers or else you'll have everything silver in your shop. So that's that and that. And find the right size socket bit here amongst all this mess. There it is. Take that adapter off. Like I said, we're just going to loosely put it together. I said loosely. <laughs> Got a little overzealous there. So there we go. One three jaw redone chuck. Man, look at that shine. That's unreal. See it there? Woo. It's not as, it's way shinier on camera than it is in person but man it looks good so now whenever we decide to get us a milling machine so we'll make us up a t-handle for this bad boy because i don't have a like i said the only four jaw i got that little 10 inch one so we might use this one to begin with it depends on how it runs you never know we still have to put the dogs in the back so but i might like i said i might take it back apart just to oh But look at that thing. Oh, super happy. Super, super happy. So co compared to what this thing looked like to what it is now, mm, let me zoom back out. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this was, of course, my first chuck. You know, that's the first big lathe I've ever owned, so I've never took one apart. And I got to thank all the fellow YouTubers that um, post their content because, you know, without that, I wouldn't have been able to know how to do it. And um, I, I, you know, this thing has very, got very few marks on it. The jaws have zero in it. Of course, they're replaceable jaws, so, the, you know, the jaws might have been replaced. But um, the insides, there's no signs of wear marks on the inside. Um, it just, everything looks really good. It spins really good. I mean, it's, I mean, no effort. One finger. So, you know, I love it. So, we'll get this ready. Um, oil it down really good. We'll get it set on, onto the lathe. Um, I still think I'm going to take it apart one more time and just do a really thorough cleaning on it. So we degreased it really good and we put, got rust off of it. And um, it, we know it works really, really well. But I, I think there's just some grit in there because when I run the jaws all the way in, it, it came out black. It should have came out clear oil. So we, I want to fix that or, or just take a look in there. And um, I think that'll do it. So until next time, what, is, what will be our next project? Hmm. I don't know. But we'll figure out something. We'll start either putting on more parts. Um, I need to have a part machined. So while I'm thinking about it, stand by. I'll be right back. So when, when we got the lathe, we noticed on the apron the uh, clutch engagement handle was just floppy. Um, it wasn't working. It, um, it just flopped down, and we couldn't figure out why. And I said, well, it was probably just a keyway busted, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say busted. 
um, a broken keyway or woodruff key missing like was on the big handle. But we, what we found was this sleeve here. And this goes in the apron and the uh, clutch engagement screw goes, or not screw, but the shaft goes through here. It's got two keys milled into, into it. Well, I said, well, there's just a keyway missing. So when we get this off, we'll look at it. Well, when I got this off, there's no keyway in this thing. So um, looking at it, um, you could tell where there was a key that was milled into it, so or, or machined into it, what might be a better word. Um, it, it's kind of hard to see in there, and I'll try to get some close-up pictures of it, but um, I have no way of knowing how they did that. Did they have a special brooch, that, and they broached that in there? Did they use a shaper back in the day and machine it in there? I have some ideas how to fix it, but I'd really like to have that piece machined, but I have no clue how to do it. And I might, you know, email Adam or um, Keith Rutger and see if they have any ideas on, on how to do that. Cause, I mean, it, it, it kind of baffles me. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm a woodworker by trade. I'm just getting into the machining stuff because I really love it, and we make a product that I need to have a lathe with. So, um, but doing this, I don't know, you know. I know we could um, broach a normal keyway in here, and then I could probably um, put a couple set screws in here and machine the keyway and, and uh, screw it to here, but I really don't want to do that. I'd really like to find or, or have someone make me one of these. So I think I will e either email Keith Rutger or Adam Booth and see if this is something they might want to tackle. I mean, it's pretty neat. I've never seen it done. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I thought it would be pretty interesting. So I'm kind of waiting on that so I can put on all the lead screws. So. I think we'll leave it at that. So I'll let you know if this makes any progress. And then until next time, see ya.